An ecosystem pond was an idea that always resonated with me because I wanted something that looked natural and was easy to maintain. I didn't want high tech filtration, constant water testing or cleaning filters every weekend. A pond that works with nature sounded perfect. But when we say nature, what does that actually mean? It isn't magic and it isn't just plants. It's bacteria processing nitrogen waste inside the pond, it's fungi and tiny microorganisms breaking down fish waste and dead plant material, it's plants absorbing nutrients to grow, it's small animals grazing on algae and leftovers, and it's larger animals preying on smaller ones. All of those things working together form an ecosystem. If this way of thinking about ponds makes sense to you, stick around, I'll be breaking down all of this step by step. But first, if you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and my aim is to help people build and maintain ponds and water features without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe, and I've got heaps of free resources over at ozponds.com to help you plan things properly. Because to build a pond like this, we don't start with products, we start by creating the right environment for these natural processes to play out. One of the most important ideas behind an ecosystem pond is surface area. Rocks, pebble, timber, sand, and even dirt aren't just there to make the pond look natural, they're there because they create huge amounts of surface area. Every surface in the pond eventually becomes colonised. Rocks, gravel, plant roots, timber, even the liner itself all develop something called biofilm. Biofilm isn't just one thing, it's a living layer made up of bacteria, fungi, algae and other microorganisms all working together. Bacteria process nitrogen and waste from fish, fungi and microbes break down solid waste and dead plant material, algae within the biofilm absorb nutrients and tiny organisms feed on each other, recycling energy over and over again. A lot of the waste that's building up inside the pond is constantly being processed. When we add rock and pebble over the liner, we're multiplying the available biological real estate. A flat piece of liner provides very little habitat. The same area covered in natural materials creates hundreds of times more space for life to do the work. There's also a practical side benefit. These natural materials help the pond visually disappear into the landscape, hard edges soften, liners disguised, and the pond begins to feel like it belongs there. In ecosystem ponds, the things that make them work are often the same things that make them look natural. Bare bottom ponds can look very clean, but all those natural processes still need somewhere to happen. In that case, we're forced into a dedicated filter, which means more management, more cleaning and less forgiveness. Whereas in an ecosystem pond, the entire pond becomes part of the filtration system. We can still add filters to help, and we often do but they're supporting the ecosystem rather than replacing it. If you want help working out proportions for things like biological filtration or mechanical filters, I've got free calculators and guides on the website, including a bog filter sizing calculator, just to take some of the guesswork out of the planning stage. Again, you can find all that at ozponds.com. Plants are another critical part of an ecosystem pond. They're not just there for decoration. Plants consume nitrogen and nutrients from the water, working alongside bacteria rather than trying to replace them. They can also compete with algae for nutrients and sunlight. The goal isn't for the plants to dominate the pond. I don't want plants dominating, bacteria dominating or algae dominating. In a healthy ecosystem, nothing wins, everything balances. Plants are interesting because they're both consumers and producers. They take in nutrients but when leaves die back or roots shed, they become food for microorganisms. Plants and even algae capture energy from the sun and turn it into organic matter that feeds the rest of the food chain. So when we're designing an ecosystem pond, plants aren't an afterthought. We need to create spaces where they can root, grow and interact with the water. They're a functional part of the system. Of course, plants also soften the pond visually. They create shade and structure and help the pond feel natural in the landscape. Ponds that look natural often behave more naturally too. In an ecosystem pond, plants aren't there to just look good, they're actually working. Flow is a funny one because not all ponds actually need a pump or a dedicated filter. 
you can absolutely build ponds that rely purely on still water, plants and natural processes. And in the right situation, that can work just fine. I personally add pumps and filters to almost all my ponds. And part of that is simply because I like the sound of running water. Moving water brings life to a pond, it adds oxygen to the water, and oxygen is critical for more almost all natural processes that we've been talking about. Flow also allows us to move water through areas that are rich in bacteria and plant roots. That's where biological filtration really comes to life. My favourite type of filter is a bog filter. I won't go too deep into bog filters here. I've got plenty of videos dedicated to them, but they're a filter that truly embraces the ecosystem approach. By adding filtration, it lets us capture some sediment and decomposing organic material. We don't need to remove everything all the time, but every bit we remove is less work for the ecosystem to deal with later. Because while ecosystems are made up of producers and consumers, the truth is that the producers tend to win over time. Energy is constantly coming in. Sunlight hits the pond every day, pollen and dust blow in, fish eat, grow, breed and eventually die, plants boom in warm weather and die back in cooler months, land animals visit the pond, drink, wash and leave things behind. So over time more and more organic material accumulates. Even the bacteria and microorganisms slow down in cooler weather, so waste processing isn't constant year round. That means sediment gradually builds up. This is where having a pump and a filter system really helps. On most backyard ponds like the ones I build, it dramatically reduces how often I need to do any hands-on cleaning. If you're at the planning stage and trying to size a pump sensibly, I've got a free pump size calculator on ozponds.com that helps keep things efficient without overthinking it. In a simple ecosystem pond setup, the flow usually works like this. A pump sits inside an intake bay skimmer or a reservoir. Water's then pumped through a biological filter, often a bog filter, and returned to the pond, sometimes through a stream or a waterfall. When keeping with the natural look, all this equipment can be hidden. Pipes, pumps and filters can disappear behind plants, rocks, pebbles and timber. So what you see is a natural looking pond, not a piece of machinery. The flow isn't about power or forcing water to behave. It's about gently connecting all the living parts of the pond into one working system. At this point, it's worth talking about animals because no matter how well we design a pond, biology still has limits. Every animal in a pond creates load. Fish, turtles, ducks and frogs all eat, grow and produce waste. Large animals create much more demand on the system than small ones. Feeding plays a huge role as well. Every handful of food is imported energy the ecosystem has to deal with. This is why wildlife ponds are often incredibly stable. The load placed on them is low. Designing with restraint here makes everything easier. And if you're not sure how big is big enough, that's where some of the planning tools that I've mentioned earlier and the references on the website really help. One thing that probably doesn't get talked about enough with ecosystem ponds is time. New ponds behave very different to mature ones. Fluctuations are normal, algae phases are normal, most of the time the ecosystem simply isn't finished forming yet. Seasonal changes matter too. Biology speeds up in summer and slows down in winter. Maintenance becomes seasonal, not weekly. Over-intervening during these natural phases often causes more problems than it fixes. Mature ponds recover faster, tolerate small mistakes and need far less input. That's when ecosystem ponds really start to feel effortless. Time isn't a problem to overcome, it's one of the most important design tools we have. Low maintenance doesn't mean no maintenance, it means predictable occasional and thoughtful intervention. A system that forgives missed weekends, a pond that changes with the seasons instead of needing constant correction. For me, a successful ecosystem pond gives something back. It's calming, it attracts life, and it feels alive. If you want more help planning or troubleshooting your own pond, there's a large library of free articles, calculators, and real DIY builds over at ozponds.com. And for those who want my exact step-by-step -step system, that's there too. No pressure, just options. 
An ecosystem pond isn't something you manage every weekend, it's something you design carefully, observe often and interact with all the time. That's what working with nature really looks like. I hope this video and the resources on Oz Ponds are helpful. Thanks for watching. See ya.